Hello everyone and welcome to the Purple Couch. I am your host, London Labana, and joining us here today is Oak and Root star forward, Jesus Chuy Enriquez. Chuy, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me, London. So uh, just start off, why don't you go ahead and give us a little background about uh, your soccer career thus far? I mean, started playing at four years old, played throughout club, played a year of high school, and then uh, got taken out of high school to, uh, to go and play professional soccer. So you mentioned you're, you're pro now. So what do you think kind of enabled you to get to uh, where you're at now? I mean, growing up, we didn't have the opportunities that, that a lot of kids have now. So um, money was an issue. You know, parents were always working. So we, we were blessed to have sponsors, and they were the ones paying for our tournaments, traveling and traveling us out of the state, country sometimes, to give us that opportunity to go and, and play in those big tournaments. And I think that's what enabled me to get that opportunity that I got because teams were able to watch me play. So you went to these tournaments and, and did all these showcases and whatnot. Was there a specific moment where you realized that, you know, like, hey, I think I, I have what it takes to uh, become a pro? Yeah, I think when my parents got that phone call that, you know, there was an opportunity to go and leave high school to, to chase a, a professional contract. Uh, that's when I kind of knew that, you know, people actually believed in me and there was people out there that were willing to give me that opportunity. So once that happened, I kind of knew that I had a good shot. You mentioned that you got taken out of high school. Um, kind of take me through that. And, and uh, do you think that you made the right decision by doing that? Or do you have any regrets doing that? Uh, I mean, to be honest, when I left high school, uh, the only regret I had was actually leaving high school early because I, you know, I missed my coaches there. I missed my, my teammates. High school was by far the funnest to this day in my career to when I started playing. You know, I was with the guys every single day. I was, you know, in study halls and all this with them. And, you know, leaving them at a young age was, was really tough for me. So that's probably the only regret I have. But other than that, no, I mean, I think I did the the right choice because now I'm, you know, I'm playing professionally and I'm able to to do this as my job. Who exactly took you out of high school then? What, where did you go from there and kind of what started your professional journey? So I went to a, I went to a tournament in San Diego. It's called Surf Cup. I'm sure you know about it. Um, and uh, they uh, they saw me play after we played their team. It's a team called Cholos de Tijuana. They saw me play, then they contacted my parents. I don't know how because my parents, like I said, they were always working. They weren't even at the tournament. And then I got a phone call from my dad one day. I was at a friend's house, and he said, hey, are you ready to go? Um, I was ready to go where? And he explained to me that it's Tijuana. I was out of the country, that they weren't able to go because obviously they didn't have the documents to be here or whatever. So if they left, they couldn't come back. So I had to make a, you know, a really tough decision, but um, I went for it. They paid everything. They paid my housing. They paid my flights. And you know, I was able to go out there. Mexico kind of you started off when you're 18 years old yeah I left well I left high school at, at 16 like the beginning of my of my high I think it was the end of well the beginning of junior year I left high school so I was out there for two years I couldn't sign because I was underage and like uh -huh. I said my parents couldn't be out there uh they my mom got offered a, a pretty good deal you know they offered her a house a car and a good job out there but she couldn't leave my little sister she couldn't leave her job she had her whole life out here so that was a decision that she had to make. So what they did, they sent me out to an academy, Nomads, in um, San Diego. So I was there for about a year and a half. And on my 18th birthday, I signed my first professional contract. Once you turn 18, you get to Mexico, kind of, what was that living conditions? Uh, what was your kind of daily routine? What did you do? Yeah, uh, Mex I off? mean, Mexico was tough. Mexico was definitely tough. You know, you were in a, in a room with 16 other players, eight bunk beds, and you had to get up at six in the morning, be there by nine. If you weren't there, you didn't have a place to sleep. 
you know, there's no really laws out there. So yeah. you have to get home at a certain time. And if you weren't there, you were left out. And also that would affect you with, you know, your team. They would see that you weren't disciplined enough and they'll probably cut you, send, send you back home, whatever the situation was. Um, there was times where we didn't have food because we would only get fed from Monday to Thursday. And then from Friday and the weekend, you know, we didn't get paid a lot. So we'd go and spend our money and we'd have to go figure it on our own. Yeah. What, what would you say then is, was the biggest struggle kind of being out there? I think the biggest struggle was definitely not being able to see my family, you know, as a really young, young I was a kid, you know, I was a kid when uh, I left home uh, and then I couldn't just cross over to the border every single day or every weekend because we weren't allowed to go home. Yeah. We, I saw my family like once, once a year because it was Christmas time and like I said, my family couldn't cross over and see me because they didn't have the documents. Mm -hmm. So um, that was, that was, I think, the toughest part for me. Would you say that that kind of played into your decision to eventually leave the Cholos and, and yeah, come back yeah, to the US? I started getting to the point where I started realizing that I was only getting older, and I started getting offers from here from the United States, and the money was better. You know, the situation about my parents being able to be at the games was better. You know, so I had to look at that, you know, in a different different aspect, and I started realizing that it was a better opportunity for me and um, for my family. So. I took the decision to to sign that contract out in Texas, and you know, and that started off my career here in the U.S. Hernandez, good job for Malik Foster as he comes through, cherry picking. Can he get through? Here's the opportunity. What a golazo! 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 What a golazo by Jesus Enriquez! What a thing of beauty! Thank you so much for that treat. So how long were you with RGV? I was with RGV for two seasons. And then I actually went to their first team uh, preseason. I got offered a contract, which they took off the table. Uh, and that's when I decided, you know, like, I've been here for two years. If you don't know how I'm playing yet or if you don't want me in the club, then, you know, you just got to be straight up with me and let me know how it is. So then right after I left that preseason and club started finding out that I wasn't going to resign. I started getting offers. I got offers from San Antonio, OKC, offers from, you know, back home in California. Um, but I decided to stay in San Antonio. Um, I mean, I like Texas and, you know, the money was pretty good. So I decided to go and wasn't the best. How difficult is, is it to to move teams or if you're in a contract? Can you just kind of get out of it or what? what no, is that see, that's process like? no, that's the tough part, you know, like you know that's a good question because when I was in San Antonio and I had mentioned that it wasn't the best decision I've ever made I kind of went for the money you know I saw money that I've never made before so I went and when I went out there I didn't get the playing time that I was getting at when I wasn't making that much money uh -huh. so I started realizing that you know I wanted to play I wanted to be with you know the starting 11 I wanted to be with the traveling team and I wasn't having that there so um I got these other opportunities but I wasn't able to leave they blocked me from my contract uh I wasn't playing I even stopped going to training sometimes because, you know, I really wanted to get out. I got to the point where we had to sit down and, you know, negotiate something with my agent, with the with the club and the other club that was interested in signing me. Yeah, kind of and, forced yourself out. Yeah, of kind of forced myself out. If not, I was just going to stay the rest of the year and not see any minutes. So so then you leave San Antonio and, and now you're with the Oakland Roots, right? Yeah, I left San Antonio and uh, I came home and out of nowhere there was a – well, I left San Antonio and went to Reno. Yeah. I went to Reno, and they were really interested in keeping me, but then the team folded out of nowhere mm -hmm. during the offseason, actually. So then I got a text from uh, my agent and said, hey, you know, the team folded, so, you know, your contract is completely done there. We're going to have to find something else. That's when that news came out that Oakland was going to turn USL uh -huh. and that there was going to be an opportunity there. So obviously, you know, being home, being really close to family after, what, eight, nine years, yeah. it was a decision that, you know, I made, you know, really quick. Uh, once the contract came out and got sent to my agent, then I was uh, signed it and, you know, then we went on. Diaz sending it in for Soria again. Enriquez fires away to the left foot, and it's in. Oakland ahead, 2-1. So you mentioned that you were kind of, uh, once Reno Foley, you're out of a contract. What is that? What is that time period like? Kind of when you're, I mean, you're you're jobless at that time, right? 
Yeah. So mentally, like, uh, is it stressful, or you kind of just let things play out how it does, or yeah, I mean, what is that process? I mean, like? it was definitely stressful for me because uh, there's other players that have their options. Like I said, you know, they have their options picked up. There's other players that want to renegotiate contracts that don't they, they don't accept accept their option. Um, so everybody has, you know, a different type of stress level, and mine was definitely really high because I wasn't playing yeah I wasn't playing at San Antonio I went to Reno and I played like what 15 minutes every game mm -hmm. so I went through a season that I never went through before so it was really stressful for me I was contacting my agent almost every day you know yeah. he was being like true you got to relax you got to calm down everything's gonna be okay and it got to the point where I think I signed my contract to like December 20th or something like that so like just imagine three four months of me just not being Stressing able to out. tell my family what's going on or my fiance now my wife whatever the situation was you know it was it was a tough moment so six years now you've been you know playing pro soccer wherever it is what do you think has been um, the key for you to kind of maintain your high level and, and continue to progress in your career I think you know having that confidence you know keeping that confidence when you make a mistake you got to get up and keep going yeah uh, definitely your diet um, when I was going through that time uh, at San Antonio as I mentioned that I was going through a tough time I wasn't taking care of myself. I was eating whatever I wanted to eat. I was mm -hmm. gaining a lot of weight and it affected me. You know, as an athlete, you need to be fit and I wasn't fit. And I just kept lying to myself. I'm fine. I'm fine. Until my agent called me and said, hey, you know, we got to get you a nutritionist. You're not looking good. And uh, I opened my eyes and, you know, I, I took the challenge of, you know, coming back to, to, the, to the fitness I had when I was playing. And, you know, I think that those two are the most important, you know, your your diet and you know being confident if you don't yeah. have confidence you're not going to be able to do anything on that field here's america and falls for him it's loose what a start for the roots it's chewy enriquez and they're up one nil two minutes into take me through then like a a daily a daily routine that you have when you're with your team and and the off season are they giving you nutritionists or you kind of have to just yeah well i have my own nutritionist own. yeah they give us nutritionists they give us you know a bunch of tips and all that but i have my own nutritionist through my agency so that has helped me out a bit um but yeah i mean i, I wake up in the morning maybe an hour and a half earlier and uh this year it was tough we didn't have a locker room so yeah. usually i wake up maybe two hours and a half that way you know you have your time to chill at home and then you have to get there an hour before but but having no locker room, we had to literally get there 30 minutes before. So we couldn't do what we do in regular locker rooms and regular mm -hmm. teams. Um, stuff started getting better. So, yeah, I wake up in the morning, uh, you know, have my shake or sometimes not even eat because I like to fast. And um, I go and after training, I just get back home and, you know, roll out, sh you know, obviously shower, do whatever I have to do and yeah. watch Netflix after that. We don't really do much after. I'm not going to go and lie and say I do all this extra stuff. But yeah, I just take my naps, rest, and be ready for the next day. And during the off season, the same thing. During the off season, I usually take about two weeks off. Mm. Um, and then after I go back to my to my things, you know, staying fit, eating well, and whatever I need to do, and wait for whenever the contract offer comes up. I guess then, you know, you've had a really su successful career. Um, I'm sure you got a lot of kids, a lot of people looking up to you. What would, you, what would be your number one um, piece of advice to people that kind of want to be in your shoes one day? Uh, I mean, kind of to just keep going, you know, no matter what they face, no matter what they go through, to just keep going, you know, injuries, uh, you know, obstacles where you don't play, just know that you're there for a reason, you know, they took you into to that team, to that school, you because, you know, they, they believe in you, for not sure, because yeah. you're just there to be there, you know, roster spots get taken all the time, so the fact that you're there, that's because, you know, you got to keep going, I mean, anything can change you know from one day to another like it did with me i could be playing every single game and the next season i could be playing zero games yeah absolutely uh but you know i kept going and i kept pushing and that's that's my advice to all those young kids to just keep going no matter what they go through all right guys you heard it here first i want to give a huge thank you to jesus enriquez make sure you guys go follow him on instagram at chewy gooey eight thank you all for tuning in i'm your host london lambana and we'll see you next time on the purple couch